Hello, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack. And in this podcast, we'll be focusing on calcium homeostasis and the role that bone tissue plays in this balance. Most of the body's calcium is stored in bone. In fact, 99% of it, making the skeletal system a significant calcium reservoir. Calcium is required throughout the body to carry out major life functions. For example, nerve cells use calcium ions to send impulses, and muscle fibers require calcium for contraction. The reactions of the blood clotting cascade need calcium to function, and many enzymes use calcium as a cofactor to allow their reactions to be carried out. Blood calcium level is carefully maintained between 9 to 11 milligrams of calcium ions per 100 milliliters. Levels that are higher can lead to cardiac arrest, and levels lower than this can trigger respiratory arrest. Bone plays an important buffering role in calcium homeostasis, absorbing calcium ions into the matrix when blood calcium levels increase, and releasing calcium into the blood when blood calcium levels decrease. This is carried out by regulating the activities of the osteoblasts, which build up bone, and the osteoclasts, which break down bone. Hormones play a significant role in calcium homeostasis. Parathyroid hormone, symbolized by the acronym PTH, is secreted by the parathyroid glands located on the thyroid glands, which are near the larynx and trachea. PTH raises blood calcium level and is secreted as a result of a negative feedback system. When blood calcium levels decrease, receptors in the parathyroid glands detect this drop which increases the production of a chemical called cyclic AMP, which stands for cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Inside a parathyroid gland cell, there is a parathyroid hormone gene that detects the rising cyclic AMP levels, which triggers an increase of parathyroid hormone secretion into the blood. High levels of PTH increase the number and activity of the osteoclasts, which speed up the rate of bone resorption, returning blood calcium levels back to normal. You can remember the basic function of parathyroid hormone with the phrase, parathyroid hormone makes calcium high. PTH also plays other roles in helping to increase blood calcium level. As it moves through the bloodstream, it causes the kidneys to conserve more calcium in the blood and minimize the loss of this ion in the urine. PTH also triggers the synthesis of a hormone called calcitriol by the kidneys, which increases calcium absorption into the blood from the GI tract. You can remember the function of this hormone by thinking that calcium tries to rise in the presence of calcitriol. In order to lower blood calcium level, another hormone called calcitonin comes into play. When blood calcium levels increase, cells in the thyroid gland called parafollicular cells secrete the hormone calcitonin symbolized by the acronym CT, into the blood. Calcitonin promotes bone formation by slowing down the osteoclasts and bone resorption and increasing calcium deposition into the matrix. Blood calcium level then drops down to normal levels. You can remember the function of calcitonin where it's trying to tone down calcium levels by moving calcium into the matrix during bone development. Over time, as we age, the loss of bone matrix through resorption begins to overtake bone deposition, which leads to an overall loss of bone mass. The loss of the bone tissue mass occurs through the process of demineralization, 
which is the removal of calcium and phosphorus minerals from the bone matrix. This loss starts in men after age 60 and occurs in women much earlier, beginning after age 30, and speeds up as estrogen levels decrease during menopause in the mid-40s. Women may lose up to 30% of their bone calcium by age 70. As calcium is lost from bone matrix as we age, a condition called osteoporosis becomes more likely and the bony matrix becomes more porous. Osteoporosis weakens bones and raises the likelihood of fractures, but also causes pain and shrinkage of certain bones like the vertebrae. We can see in this photo comparison from the scanning electron microscope, spongy bone trabeculae found in normal bone is very intact and mineralized, heavily calcified, and the porous nature of the osteoporotic bone. All of the missing ions of calcium from the matrix are apparent in this very weak infrastructure of the trabeculae. This makes the bone much more delicate and easy to break. Aging also results in bones becoming brittle due to a lower rate of protein synthesis. We know that collagen fibers give bone high tensile strength, and the loss of this protein makes bone more likely to fracture. Remember that tensile strength gives bone the ability to endure high pressure and stress without breaking. Finally, human growth hormone levels drop as we age, which leads to a reduced protein synthesis within the bone matrix.